Behind every stop-motion character, there is a setting. Literally. Sometimes the set is very simple in order to put all the focus on the character, but other times the environment is important. Not only does the set show where the character is, but it sets the mood and establishes the style of the movie. The aesthetic of stop-motion has a lot to do with that handmade look of the environment. So let's make a handmade environment. First, do some research. I'm making a kitchen, so I'm going to Google Kitchens. Real kitchens show me what's in the typical kitchen and different ways it can be arranged. But I want to go for a stylized look, so I'm going to look at cartoon kitchens for inspiration. Look for different ways your chosen set can be represented. A stylized look may be funnier than going for realistic. Then sketch it out to zero in on your style. My idea is to have the basic architecture straight and squared off while the detail and color is whimsical. You might want to go for a Tim Burton look, or Toontown, or cold and sterile. And then plan it out and make your blueprints. Don't rush this part. Carefully plan out how big set elements will be and how tall to make them in relation to your character. Measure twice and cut once, as they say. Now we can start to build. The floor needs to be solid and sturdy. It can be a tabletop if it's okay to paint it, or glue paper to it. But if you're going to tie down your character, it's best to have a raised platform. Before making the walls, I think it's best to start with the set pieces first. In this case, the counters, appliances, and cabinets. For a living room, it would be furniture and shelves. Consoles for spaceships, trees for the forest, and so on. Of course, you can shop for set pieces, such as Barbie furniture on eBay, but to maintain a consistent art direction, I'm going to make the stuff. While lightweight wood or plastic is best, I'm on a budget and a tight schedule, so I'm using foam board. It's inexpensive, easy to cut, and easy to paint. Cardboard will work too, but see if you can get foam board into your budget. I've even seen it at the dollar store. Use a new, sharp blade and try not to cut your finger off. I have some scars I won't show you, but the rule is to cut away from yourself. For corners you want to bend, carefully cut just through the top paper. Then cut angles on both sides of the cut so that when you bend the corners, it doesn't bunch up inside and you get a clean bend on the outside. You can get more rounded corners as well. The goal is to avoid seeing the inside foam or the corrugation of the cardboard. As you create things, try them out on the set. Play around with camera angles. Is everything fitting the way you planned? Will shots be composed as planned? Best to adjust things early on. Now we'll start in on the walls, making them a little taller than needed. To make the set as large as possible, I'm putting the walls on the outside of the floorboard. But if you're going right on the tabletop, the walls can go anywhere. It does need to be framed, though, to make sure it will stay steady. One by two furring strips will work. Cut them to the size of the walls and hot glue them together. If you're not able to do any sort of woodwork, you can make the frame with foam board or cardboard. Just make some long, straight, rectangular pieces that can run along the edges. We want our set to look like there is a world beyond the wall, so let's add some doors and windows. With everything in place and previewing camera angles, sketch in the doors and windows based on the size of your character and the composition of your shots. Then you can lay it flat and carefully measure the straight edges. Remember the windows are the same height as doors, or break that rule if you want something different. Cut balsa wood to frame the doors and windows, which also covers the inner core of the foam board. Molding and trim can also cover seams and gaps. So now the set is a big white canvas that's calling out for some paint. Put some thought into the art direction here. What mood are you trying for? Clean and sterile? Worn and lived in? Bold? Whimsical? And how will the characters and props look against the colors? I want the characters and props to stand out against the set, so I'm going for lightened, almost pastel shades, starting with the floor. I'm painting over a previous paint job. I want it light with the suggestion of a pattern. You'll get an interesting gradated look by painting additional shades and colors into the main color wet into wet, blending as you go. This softens the edges and suggests shadows and worn areas. The base color for these walls is light yellow, but once again, there are secondary colors I'm going to blend into it as I go. You have to work fast doing one section at a time before it dries. Blotching the brush gets a sort of textured stucco look to it going darker on the edges and around where the cabinets will go in order to get that shadow look. Your set may call for a different look, but I urge you to try this blending technique, even just in the corners, rather than just going for a solid color. Now here's something really important. Paint the back of the foam board. If you only paint one side, it warps the board. Painting both sides balances out the effect. Just use some old paint or some color you don't need anymore. 
Appliances are also painted wet on wet to add some shading, but they get straight strokes for contrast. And the cabinets are darker around where the doors will go to show shadows. And just like walls, paint the inside. I'm going for whimsical, so I'm painting the cabinet doors different colors. Your set may not have anything like this, but give some thought to the ways you can make the color scheme creative. If you have wooden set pieces like a table and you're going for a realistic look, you can bring out the wood texture by diluting brown paint, brushing it on, and wiping off the excess, like staining. Experiment on the back to work out the shade and delusion, as you only have one shot at this, but it's a nice variation from painting a solid color. With everything painted, assemble it all again and have a look. You can hot glue parts to the wall, but keep things loose so you can move things as shots require. Well, we've got the basic structure and paint job, but the beauty is in the details, which we'll get into in part two. Thanks for watching.